What's up, Virgo? Mystic Unicorn coming through with a love reading just for you. Yeah. Thank you so very much for tuning in. So we're going to be looking at your love life. So we're either going to be looking at a potential partner, a potential mate, someone that you're interested in, you, you've got a crush on, or someone you're actually involved in, uh, involved with, whether you're actually committed to this person you've just been dating or it's some sort of situationship. Or we could just be looking at the reality of the situation between you and love itself if you are currently single and there are no prospects out there, yeah? So what I'm gonna be doing for that is my side-by-side -side spread, okay? So this, this spread starts with the Romance Angels right here, and we're gonna be looking at what the overall energy is for Virgo at this current moment or for whenever this reading resonates for you or just for whatever this message is for Virgo, okay? Keep in mind, guys, that this is a general reading. This may not resonate for you, okay? If it doesn't resonate for you, don't worry about it. Just hit that subscribe button for me and check back later. The next one may resonate for you, yes? Also keep in mind that the roles could be reversed, okay? You could actually be a cross watcher watching for a Virgo. Take it as it resonates, you guys, okay? And keep in mind, again, this is a general reading, so this is not going to resonate for everyone, all right? Cool, Virgo. So let's get into it here. So what is the current overall energy for Virgo in love at this time? First card out here, Virgo, is healing family issues. All right. That's a pretty popular card these days, not going to lie. Did something else? I thought something else flipped. Nope. Okay. Let's get two more cards here for Virgo for the overall energy. What's going on in terms of this healing of family issues? Okay. Oh my goodness. Virgo, this is really interesting. I mean, I've done the fire signs and now I'm doing the earth signs and so far all of the messages are pretty much the same. But the next two cards here we are, we have deception and then we have let go of control issues. All right, Virgo. Um, so this could be very general or very generic in the fact that there are control issues here and or there are deceptive energies here or deceptive tendencies here because of family history or past trauma within the family. Now, something a little more specific that I'm getting here, to uh, not Taurus, Virgo. However, Taurus did get two of the same cards here, deception and let go of control issues. So maybe that reading would resonate for you. Uh, you may have Taurus in a your chart somehow, or you could be dating a Taurus. You could be involved with a Taurus, but um, Virgo, Something that I'm getting very specifically, at least for this message in your relationship or in your situationship, that there are actually uh, family members or there is a certain family structure in place that is creating a rift. What I literally just heard is creating a rift in your marriage or just creating a rift or just straight up difficulties for your relationship. Okay, for this relationship or for relationships in general. So what I'm also picking up on now is that this is for potentially for somebody who has who constantly faces difficulty in their relationships because of family involvement. Um, there's also some sort of controlling aspect involved with that, obviously, because you have let go of control issues, but there's a small part of the of the message here that is relating to individuals in which their family has some sort of control over the individual and thus is an has some sort of control over that individual's relationships okay there could be a, a strong amount of meddling from certain family members in this person's life or in your life which then bleeds into your relationship with others or your potential partnership and that causes problems OK, um, or there could be uh, or there could be controlling factors on behalf of the ind on behalf of the of you or the individual in question. And that's where it's starting to get weird or it's starting to not necessarily make sense to me. I feel like somehow for somebody here, there's some sort of controlling aspect. And it has some sort of it has something to do with their family. So what I'm what I'm feeling of it, how it's coming together, the picture in my mind that I'm getting about this is that this individual is very, very controlling of their partner and 
Maybe it's that they're controlling of their partner because they want their, they want to give a certain, yes, they want to give a certain image off to their family members. And the image that they want to, want their family to see of them and of their relationships is not accurate. It's contrived. It's not real. It's a facade. I'm even getting energies here, Virgo, of this person doesn't even live half of what they preach or half of what they want people to see of them. Okay. Ooh. All right, Virgo, let's move forward here. Now, that doesn't necessarily have to do with, have anything to do with their family. I want to, I don't know why, but I'm wanting to make this very clear. Yes, there could be some situations in which their family, the, the family structure is very strict or has a certain image that they're trying to portray. And this person is trying to fit in with that. I'm also picking up on though, that this, their family doesn't even, oh, okay. Well, their family doesn't even require this, but this person is trying to prove some sort of point. And this could be a situation in which we have the Virgo who's trying to be the pillar of perfection, okay? And the family that they come to or the family structure that they come to doesn't vibe with that. Now that may have caused problems for the child or for this individual as a child. And now as an adult, they're on this, they have this desire, this need to prove a point. So they're trying to portray a certain image but that image doesn't even come naturally to them. It may not even naturally be a part of their true makeup or a part of who they truly are. This is still just some sort of residual need, desire for respect or desire to be seen in a certain way that is causing this person to have such controlling tendencies. Wow, Virgo. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, let's move forward here. So the next step in this spread, Taurus, is to go, I'm not Taurus, I'm so sorry, Virgo. Virgo, um, you, but, but again, you might be dealing with a Taurus, just keep that in mind, but sorry, my, my mistake. But the next step in this spread, Virgo, is to look at what is directly between either you and your person or you and love in general, okay? So what is it that you will need to face directly head on in this situation, yeah? All right, three cards here, please. Spirit for Virgo in terms of what is in between these partners or this person and love. What is in between? What's in the center here? First card out is, in fact, love yourself first. Okay. All right. What else? What else is in between? Two more cards, please. Spirit, what is in the center of this situation ship for Virgo? You do have soulmate here. Okay. Ooh. Good Lord, Eric. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay. Uh, all right. Vir last card. Last card for Virgo here. Make the effort. Interesting. This is very interesting, Virgo. Uh, love yourself first, soulmate, and make the effort. Okay, so what I'm getting from this Virgo is that somebody needs to face the fact that whatever whatever image they're putting out or whatever controlled or contrived image that they're trying to portray to the world is not an accurate representation of who they are. And this individual needs to love themselves first and love themselves enough to work on building up their confidence to not care how other people see them or to not care about other people's perception of their image. The you, either you Virgo or this person that you're in, associated with or connecting to needs to make sure that the image that they're putting out there is one that they like, that you appreciate or this person appreciates about themselves. Your, the, the image that you put out to other people, uh, first of all, People are going to see you the way they see you, regardless of how you carry yourself, Virgo. Okay? You could carry yourself with the utmost dignity and poise and character and grace. And if someone outside of that wanted to, I'm sure they would be able to find a way to speak ill of your character. I mean, 
And, and that's not to say that you deserve that. But but that's to say, Virgo, that you could your somebody here is killing themselves to make sure that everybody they come into contact with sees them as on the up and up. And that is not sustainable. It is not sustainable whatsoever. Virgo, this could even be a situation. Somebody here may be the type of individual that just gets into certain relationships for status or for the image that they would get from it. Somebody here is actually, in fact, in a relationship with someone like that. And I'm going to be honest with you, Virgo. One of the things, one of the, one of the strong specificities that I'm picking up on in this situation is that uh, we could be re speaking to or speaking about a masculine Virgo that has this obsession with being seen a certain way. And that causes them to go after certain individuals or certain partners that would help them get to that image or be seen in that certain way. But they, but I'm also feeling like this person is kind of a predator. And I feel like there is a feminine energy that is watching this video, cross-watching for a Virgo, and this is the type of person that you are with, all right? If this resonates for you, if this is striking a chord for you, take it. Take it as it resonates, Virgo. If this doesn't resonate for you, then this isn't the message for you. I'm sure there are going to be more out there that may be for you, okay? Okay. But what I'm getting very specifically here, Virgo, is that you or somebody here is involved with a predator. And they actually go after nice nice or, quote, good girls or boys. It doesn't matter. But but um, this is this feels like a masculine and a feminine dynamic, whether it's two men, two women, or a man and a woman. It doesn't matter. And, after, and even if it is a man and a woman, the woman could be the masculine and the man could be the feminine here, okay? So just take it as it resonates. Wherever you find yourself in the position, put yourself there. Wherever you naturally fall there, allow yourself to be there and to take the message that comes through. But this masculine individual goes after good little girls, okay? individuals or feminine energies that are that are um that are that are malleable that are easy to manipulate that are easy to to mold because they have this this person has an obsession with being seen a certain way and it has everything to do with your family or their family and how either how the family sees them or the family environment that they grew up in that caused them to develop this complex towards being seen a certain way. Like I would rather I, you, you, it would be over my dead body before someone sees me like they see those people. That's the kind of energy that I'm getting here. Okay. Now what's in between this is love yourself first, Virgo. One and the number one, love yourself first, okay? So either let go, love yourself enough to let go of this need to be seen a certain way or love yourself enough to let go of an individual that's trying to shape you into something that you're not, nor are you meant to be, okay? Underneath that, you do have soulmates. So this is giving me vibes of this is an individual that is a soulmate for you, but is an individual that you agreed to come into contact with in this lifetime to help you learn and develop and grow and teach you something and become a better person, a better version of yourself, okay? And obviously make the effort is there, but I feel like Virgo, make the effort is there in terms of make the effort to find a way to love yourself as much as you possibly can, all right? I wanna move forward here. The next step in this side-by-side -side spread is to get a little, bit, a little bit of clarity from the Love Oracle deck. Um, and I want to clarify the soulmate card so far. What's the soulmate card here for Virgo? What I really want to get, what I really want to tell you about this soulmate energy, Virgo, is to really discern, really work on discerning what this message means for you or what this situation means for you. Okay? What is it causing you to focus on? What is it causing you to feel? What is it bringing up for you? All right. This, this is a, definitely a soulmate that's meant to teach you something. 
Ah, look at what just came out. Self-indulgence. And this is focus on self, self-worth, time to heal, shadow work, and self-appreciation. So even if you are involved with an individual that's extremely controlling, there's something here that you do need to take responsibility for um, in terms of aligning with this in your life. Okay. This is, this is a, definitely a soulmate that's meant to teach you something and is meant to, um, get you to focus on yourself and do some shadow work. Okay. You do have the chaser here next, the chaser in a codependent relationship, fear of abandonment issues. So you definitely could be the chaser here. Yeah. Heartbroken is at the bottom of the deck. So Virgo, this is this is a situation in which somebody is in a codependent situation with someone um, because of their abandonment abandonment issues. When I read that from the Chaser card, that stood out the most. And someone has abandonment issues, and so that's why they allow themselves to be so shapeable, so malleable, so moldable, so that someone won't abandon them again. And I'm sorry that you find yourself in that position. Um, I feel for you. I understand. I've been there myself. Um, but you really, you really need to work on your shadow work here, okay? Because this chaser energy, this is a shadow aspect. This absolutely is an aspect of your shadow that needs to be faced, okay? I mean, and, and it, it, quite frankly, it feels like, Virgo, this is a shadow aspect in which you are learning to... To, to be discerning of your self-worth. Because if you were really, if you were really feeling your self-worth, you would never allow someone to change you just to fit a mold they choose. Just to keep you around or just to, just so that they choose to, like I'm literally getting an energy of, well, well, I'm not sticking around unless you do X, Y, and Z, unless you become this person until you shake, change yourself to fit this mold. And I literally am getting the energy that someone is absolutely consciously and blatantly using that to manipulate someone else. You don't want me to leave you? Then do this. Otherwise, I'm going to leave you. And me personally, like at the point that I've come to, it's like, okay, well, bye. I mean, I'm pretty sure you told me you were just going to leave me because I didn't fit this mold for you. So what the hell are you still doing here? Right? But that's not a place that I came to overnight. It was not easy to get here. It took me standing up for myself consistently and choosing myself and my own happiness and my own integrity and my own sense of self and honoring that, showing up for myself instead of constantly trying to change myself to show up for others just so that they were happy. And just so that I could then feel like I'm acceptable, like I'm a good person, like I'm, a, like I'm worthy. No, no, you're not a good person and you're not worthy because someone else validates that within you. You're a wor you are worthy because you are, period. You're worthy because you're worthy. There is no need to define that. There is no need to say, well, you're worthy because of X, Y, and Z. No, 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 my dear, my dear. You are worthy because you're worthy, period. End of story. No need for further explanation. All right, Virgo, let's move forward. And so the next step in this situation, Virgo, is to look at both sides of the equation. We have side A and we have side B, all right? Now, um, in terms of the two sides of the situation, Virgo, uh, normally when I, when I do this reading, side A is meant to be, or is intended to be the individual watching the reading or the individual asking the question. Okay. The viewer, um, side B often is the, or is intended to be the other person in the situation. However, this is a general reading, all right? And you could find yourself on either side of the equation, okay? So we're just gonna go for now, we're gonna go with side A and side B. For side A, I'm gonna be using the before tarot, okay? And then for side B, I'm gonna be using the after tarot for no reason other than the fact that they're just sister decks and I wanna use them together. <laughs> all right, Virgo, so let's give this three shuffles and we'll look at the energies for the individual on side a yes what's the energy of the individual on side a in this relationship virgo that was one this is two for my virgos sun moon and rising and this is three what is the energies of the individual on side a 
All right, here we go. Here we go. Side A for Virgo, please, Spirit. Side A for Virgo. Oh, look at that. Okay, Virgo. So we obviously have a controlling energy on side A. Because the first card, well, first, the only card that's come out here face up, take these. Yes, okay. The only card that's come out here face up so is the Emperor. Okay, Virgo. And of all the cards in the deck, the Emperor is the most controlling. So Virgo, this actually could be your energy. You could be the controlling one. And it's, and it's interesting, Virgo, because I will say that in the beginning of this reading, as I started to feel through things, I was feeling that, number one, we are talking to a Virgo here that has extreme perfectionistic... Well, no, I won't call it extreme because Virgo, one of your challenges is is balancing the, uh, the balance, balancing the drive towards perfection, okay? So I do feel like this is a Virgo that has that has uh, perfectionistic tendencies, and it's these tendencies that are causing this individual to be controlling in this way. Okay. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be malicious, Virgo. All right. I'm not saying if this is you and you have a certain you have a certain desire or this like nagging need to show up a certain way. It doesn't have to be malicious, all right? It could very well be that you had some traumatic traumatic experience in life in the past, maybe even in your childhood along, uh, associated with your family in which you're trying to give off the, 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 the image that you're not a train wreck. I mean like, okay, I understand that one, but, but ultimately there is, the, the problem here is control controlling situation, a controlling aspect. For others of you, um, you have manifested this control into your life for a very specific reason. At the bottom of the deck, you do have the magician, okay? And the magician is talking about being the master manifester, okay? Manifesting things for your life. Now, I want to look at the cards that are have fallen face down. Okay, look, you do have strength in reverse and the three of swords, all right? So... Yes. All right. So the individual that is in this controlling energy is in this controlling energy because they've experienced heartbreak in the past. And this is an egoic. This is this is this is coming from ego. You have strength in reverse. And what it feels like here, Virgo, is that you or the person that you're connected to, whoever, whoever is uh, whoever is being uh, referred to as on side A here. Um, you have this person or you have an extreme egoic reaction to this. This is an over overcompensation from heartbreak in the past. Okay. Now there are three more cards here. You have the queen of cups, you have the eight of pentacles and you have the hanged man. So for the individual that is in this controlling energy. Okay. Number one. Their ego is way out of control, way out of control, okay? Number two, um, I, okay, sorry, Virgo, bear with me. Either you are the individual that is controlling like this, Virgo, or you have manifested this individual, this type of individual into your life, but it's because of ego, whether, whether, whatever, okay? But with the Queen of Cups, the Eight of Pentacles, and the Hanged Man here, there need to be boundaries. There need to be stronger boundaries. You need to, you manifested this in your life because of a need for stronger boundaries, for a need to work on something, Eight of Pentacles, to craft something. And I'm just feeling like this is needing to craft yourself. Uh, I'm feeling like this is a need to... Craft a better version of yourself, Virgo, but this is not something that's going to happen overnight. This is not something that, like I'm getting the need for consistency over time of understanding yourself, Queen of Cups, getting in, getting in a line with uh, getting in line with your sense of compassion and then using that compassion for yourself. There is a need for a change in perspective here. And I feel uh, with the hanged man, and I feel like this. If you uh, if you have manifested this type of controlling individual into your life, the restriction here, 
hanged, the hanged man, is meant to teach you a lesson, is meant to bring you a change in perspective, is meant to bring you some sort of enlightenment, okay? Let's look at the other side of the equation, and for that, we're gonna look at side B using the after tarot, yes? Three shuffles here for the energies of the individual on side B. One. So I am feeling like this is really could potentially be for someone who is cross-watching for a Virgo here, okay? This is two. And, and keep in mind, you guys, the magician is a manipulative energy as well. This is three. I mean, just, just the energies of the magician are naturally, naturally manipulative. But that doesn't have to be a bad thing, okay? If you're going to manifest anything, you're going to need to manipulate you're going to need to use the tools at your disposal to manipulate the energy around you to, 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 to create what you desire. So the magician is naturally a manipulative card, okay? But then you have the emperor here, which is extremely controlling, and then you have strength in reverse. Way too much ego going on here, all right? So let's look at the energies of the individual on side B for Virgo. And the energies for the individual on side B. Two of wands. Queen of Wands. Energies for the individual on side B. Two of Wands, Queen of... Okay. Okay, Virgo, look, I like this. I like this. So the energy for side B is the Two of Wands, the Queen of Wands, yes, and then we have at the bottom of the deck, overall energy, the Lovers. So looky here. Looky here, you guys. I don't care. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be straight up and down with you and like cuss alert. I don't give a flying fuck what this other person says, either Virgo or cross watcher. I don't give a shit because ultimately Virgo, what you choose to stay with, what you choose to stay in alignment with is 100% your choice and your choice only. The Lovers and the Two of Wands. Obviously, the Two of Wands is about a choice, but the Lovers is also about a choice. Even though a lot, I mean, it's associated with like divine partnerships and love situations and this, that, and the third. Ultimately, the Lovers is about a choice. So, and the Two of Wands is the main minor arcana version of the Lovers here, okay? Well, it, kind of, because the Two of Cups can be seen as a minor arcana version of the Lovers as well. But you have a choice, Virgo or cross watcher. I don't give a damn what this other person says or how they, tr how they try to spin it or the words they try to use or how they try to coerce you into the situation. You have a choice of what it is you choose to be in alignment with. The queen of wands, okay? Mm, I, you know, I, Virgo, I could try and go on and try and, 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 and pull more about that for you, but shit. The long and the short about it is, Virgo, you have a choice. And what I feel like here is this situation, this controlling, dominant situation is meant to teach you the hanged man, or at least is meant to get you into that space where you recognize that you are really, truly the only one that is holding you in this position. Because you can choose to leave at any time. Now, I do recognize, I do realize, I am picking up on the fact that there are some individuals or maybe this partner, this emperor energy, this controlling individual that would say to you, all right, fine, you know what? You grow, like, you remember, okay, do any of you remember when you were kids and you started to get a little, you know, a little defiant and you were started to like stand up or talk back a little bit and your mom and your dad were like, all right, you grown, go on, jump on out there then, go ahead. Just, just don't, don't come crying back to me when everything goes wrong, this, that, and the third. Like, I feel like this person is using those types of manipulative tactics to get, to discourage you from leaving, to discourage you from stepping out on your own, to discourage you from stepping out of this codependent situation. Okay. Even though they may be, they it may seem like they have the upper hand here. This other individual is just as codependent as you are because you both find yourselves in a codependent situation. You can't seem to function without their control and they can't function without someone to control. Make sense? Okay. I'm gonna close this reading out for you, Virgo. We're gonna get you some Oracle guidance from the Lover's Oracle. Yes? 
closing oracle guidance for my Virgos, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Thank you so much for Spirit. Closing oracle guidance for my Virgos. There it is, right there. Oh, shit. <laughs> Look at this, Virgo. Twin flames, your passion ignites. Okay. So uh, you could be, you very much, look, you could be uh, vibing with the twin flame journey. And what I want to say here is that, I mean, you do have the lovers here and you do have the emperor, which is the divine masculine. And then the lovers can represent the twin flame union or the bond or the, the connection between the twins. You also have the queen of wands, which to me is representative of the divine feminine in 3D form. All right, so um, you, this feels like a, a message for someone that is on the twin flame journey that resonates vibes with the twin flame journey. You're most likely the feminine here and you are being taught to stand up for yourself. That's the long and the short of it. Listen, I don't care if this person is your twin flame, whether some other reader has told you or whether your divine, your guides and your higher self have confirmed it for yourself. I don't give a flying fuck, Virgo. Okay? That does not give this person the right to control you. Or that does not give you the right to control someone else. Just because this person is quote unquote your divine masculine or your divine feminine or spirit has told you that this is your divine counterpart and you're going to get married and spend the rest of your lives together. That does not mean that they get to control you. You are still a whole and individual being. You have a sense of wholeness and sovereignty that is all your own and has nothing to do with your supposed twin flame, period. And I think that's what you're on in the process of learning right now, Virgo, is how to stand up for yourself, how to choose for yourself. Because ultimately, Virgo, also the lovers here, oh, look at that, the Ace of Cups is underneath the lovers. <laughs> but the lovers here, Virgo, is about a choice, but I also like to see it as a choice, a choice of vice, the, with the with Adam or the masculine here by the burning bush or virtue with Eve or the feminine here with the tree of knowledge. You have a choice. You can choose vice, which would be giving into the controlling tendencies of this individual, or you could choose virtue. And virtue is a choice to love yourself. Ooh, Virgo. You know what virtue is here for you? Is a choice to love yourself enough to say when it's time to move on. Look at that. The lovers, the ace of cups, and the six of swords. With the ten of cups at the bottom of the deck. You want to know why? Because you choose to be happy. And if being with this individual, whether you're a twin flame or not, Virgo, being with this individual, if they're just controlling you, manipulating you, and making your life a living hell, then I don't care who they are to you. It is not worth it. You need to love yourself first. Look at that. Look at that, Virgo. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for tuning in, Virgo. I really hope this was helpful for you. Um, I'm sending you guys so much love and I eagerly look forward to connecting with you guys for another reading very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Bye.